Hey everybody, welcome into this Adobe Photoshop tutorial brought to you as always by tutvid.com. Today we're going to look at this club promotion style poster here in Photoshop. We're going to cover a lot of different features. It kind of gets a little intricate but I think you're also going to kind of enjoy it. Um, it's based upon a, a poster that I saw, I think on Pinterest, uh, that I grabbed and just stashed somewhere and was like, someday I'm gonna do a tutorial on this, and that someday has arrived because I'm doing it right now. Let's jump in and take a look at this. All right, so this is the finished product. As you can see, uh, we basically just have all this. This is what we're gonna talk about creating. I'm not gonna go over how to create the text down here because it's basically just pick nice, clean, sharp-edged fonts, a couple lines, and a little bit of an outer glow. And if you take a look up here, we're gonna be covering plenty on how to do some outer glow action uh, as we move through this tutorial. So I think you'll be just fine when it comes to outer glow. All right, now the whole thing begins with a new document. So I'm just going to uh, go, well, new document here. Actually, let's go file new uh, so we don't talk about hotkeys. File new, there we go. We get the new document dialog box. And what I'm gonna do is go inches. Now I'm going inches because in theory, this would be something that would be printed. Um, where this theory breaks down is I'm going to leave it at a resolution of 72 pixels per inch. Really should probably be at least 150, most likely 300 pixels per inch if you're actually going to send this off to the printer. But hey, we're going to kind of you know play with things a little bit here. But I'm going to go with a pretty standard poster size of 24 inches wide by 36 inches high, uh, 72 PPI, and CMYK color, sure. Let's go ahead and do it. Go ahead and hit create. And you can see, bam, we've created a brand new fresh document. Now, I'm going to use Adobe Stock, and I've in fact found this blonde girl wearing this black leather outfit. She's got like a uh, motorcycle helmet, uh, just a great pose uh, for what we're looking for. And in fact, you can see really all we want is sort of the back of uh, a guy or a woman's body or even a group of people. And I kind of want them looking off camera. Um, so that's perfect with her. Uh, and then also just kind of like this starry night scene. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to drag this Adobe stock photo into my document. Voila. And I'm going to rotate it. Uh, well, I'm going to hold down my shift key and there we go, rotate it. And then I'm going to drag it up to a top corner here. I'm going to let it snap into place because under the view menu, I have my snapping turned on. Hold down. Well, actually, I don't even need to hold down my shift key. I'm just going to just drag it until it clicks to my document. And then I'll hold down like shift and alt and I'll just drag it a little bit further just to make it a tiny bit bigger than my document. Now, it looks like the darker part is up here at the top of the document. I really definitely want the darkest stuff at the bottom. So I'm just going to go edit. Uh, free transform and I'm gonna right click and choose to flip it vertical and that'll move well you know what now it looks kind of about the same on both sides now that I'm looking at it like that hit the little check icon and commit the change and we have our background now I can take our actual background and just junk it I can get rid of it I don't need it this is our actual hardcore real deal background now, with the girl, we can drag her in, but we need to mask her. So I actually already have her open as a PSD. This is the full image. And all I did to create the selection, I'm not going to do it here in this tutorial. I've got a ton of other tutorials on creating selections. I used the quick selection tool, quickly drew a selection around her, and then used the much maligned select and mask tool. And I went through, uh, applied a little bit of a radius, but mainly used the, the smart radius or refine radius brush on her hair to get a nice little selection. If I shut that off, I can see I exported it here to a new layer with layer mask. And this this is what I've got. Now I'm going to just make sure my layer contents are linked to the layer mask if they aren't, uh, but they probably will be by default. Go ahead and grab your move tool and I can just grab her and drag her into our document and drop her in place. And I may need to resize her a little bit. Eh, she's about about right. Maybe I'll make her a little bit bigger. So I'll place her right about there. I'm going to zoom out just a little bit. I'm going to hit command or control T, which is free transform. I'm going to scale her up kind of like that. Maybe I'll place her right around there. Uh, and then just hit the enter return key to you know, drop her right in place. You can see here on our original poster, she comes up, maybe actually she comes up almost halfway. So, well, yeah, it's probably about right. It's probably about right where we have her, right about there. Maybe I'll just use my arrow keys, nudge her up and over a tiny, tiny bit. And you can see we've got her dropped in place just like that. And next up, what we want to do is apply some darkening, some shading here to the bottom of the overall image. So let's create a new layer. It's a blank layer. That's using that little uh, new layer icon right down there, if you can see it. And we'll name this uh, Darken or something like that. And we're going to grab our gradient tool. I'm going to select my gradient stripe and just make sure I have a black to white gradient. That's all I need. And then I'm going to draw with black to white coming up from the bottom. There we go, something like that where I go black right up to white. And I'm going to set this to a layer blend mode of multiply. That's essentially going to get rid of all the white areas and just keep the black. Now you can see that really hides her. So I think I'm going to grab her, take my move tool. I'm going to move her up a little bit higher. And then I'll select my darken gradient and pull it down, 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 down. 
until probably somewhere right around there. So it's just going to give us a nice little darkening at the bottom of our image, darken up her, le her leather jacket nicely. Uh, and after that, what we're going to do, I can collapse my libraries panel for a moment here. I'm going to open up my adjustments panel and I'm going to choose to apply a gradient map adjustment layer. That's this icon right here. And you can see it makes everything black and white. We've got a black and white gradient. It's mapping the blacks to the darkest, the whites to the lightest. What we want to do is select our gradient stripe and I want to create a very specific gradient. So double click the black handle here and we're going to go with the gradient 1 E double zero two six, a very like kind of dark but somewhat desaturated grape color. Double click on the white color stop, and here we're going to go with the color AC one five six and the letter A. So it's a very hot pink, magenta pink color. You can see what it's doing to our image uh, right there if you take a look. And really, before we go any further, I want to let you guys know that I'm selling a course over on tutvid.com. Link just appeared right up there on the top corner of this video if you're watching it on YouTube. Uh, it's a course all about how to retouch images and photos. Photoshop, you're going to learn so much about Photoshop, and if you pick it up, it helps support what I'm doing here, and uh, that, I mean, I need support if I'm going to keep doing this stuff, um, but of course, you do support what I'm doing here just by watching the video, sharing it with your friends, slapping the like button, all those kind of things, but really, if you pick up a copy of the course, it's really good, thank you so much if you do, if not, hey, keep watching this video, it's still free, and I still love you all the same. Uh, speaking of all the same, our colors are kind of muted here in this image, and I think it's because we're working with a CMY image so I'm gonna go mode and I'm just gonna swap it to RGB color um, because again technically yes this is for print but let's play in the in the screen world here to get some more vibrant colors so I'm gonna just select RGB color and you can see Photoshop's gonna say hey look you might need to merge layers I'm gonna say no don't merge anything and then it's also gonna say would you like to rasterize smart objects I'm gonna say nope don't rasterize either and just making that switch, look at that. Our colors already become much more vibrant. Uh, speaking of vibrant colors, let's apply a color balance adjustment layer here. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go to the shadows first in color balance. And I'm going to set red to negative 15, pump some cyan into those shadows. I'm going to set my uh, magenta slash green to negative 20, which is going to give me some magenta. And then negative 10 to pump a little yellow into the shadows. I'm going to jump over here to midtones, And I'm just going to go negative 10, negative 10. And then I want to add some blue. So I'll go like 45. Really, you can see we're adding quite a bit of blue there. I'm going to go over to highlights and I want to really pump some red into the highlights. So I'm going to go like plus 55. You can see it's going to help the pink really jump. Uh, in greens, I want to add magenta to the highlights. So I'll knock down greens to negative 20. And I want to add some yellow. So I'm going to knock the blues down to negative 35. And you can see there's before the color balance. There's after color balance. Just much more vibrant, rich, contrasty colors. Looks really, really cool. Now we're going to be using some different brushes here in uh, this tutorial. I'm going to try to link everything in uh, in the description to this video. So we're going to go with this powder brush pack right now. And this powder brush pack um, is, is a pretty cool one. We're going to go ahead and create a new layer here. And I'm just going to call this uh, blue stuff or something. It's We're literally going to be creating some blue stuff. Grab the brush tool, right click, and from the flyout menu here, choose to replace your brushes. And the brush pack that I'm looking for, well, like I said, I have it linked down in the description to this video video, um, but it's one, It's a, basically a powder brush pack. I believe it's going to be the same exact one that I have, but if not, it'll be close enough to what I have that you'll be able to make it work. And when it loads into Photoshop, all we need to do is grab, you know, just grab any one of the, the powder brush packs. Great. I'm going to set the size to like 2500. That looks pretty good. And I'm going to set my foreground color to a very light blue, almost like a nice light powder blue. 3BABEB -E -B is probably fine. Hit OK. And uh, I want the opacity of my brush tool here to be at 100%. That's kind of important. And what I'm going to do is just click a couple times here um, on my uh, on my image. I'm just looking to add some sort of like blue. Whoops. Went to my other document. Let me zoom out. That'll give me a little more control here. Just get, get like the little blue poofiness around the image. Uh, nothing too, too crazy. And then we'll even set this layer to the blend mode of like soft light. And that's going to give us just kind of this almost blue lens flare effect. If, it, if you think it's too much, reduce the opacity a little bit. But the whole poster is going to be very, very colorful. It's almost going to be like we want it to dance in your eyes when you look at it. So we want there to be a lot of color. Now here's where things are going to be kind of interesting because... We're in a Photoshop tutorial, but we're leaving Photoshop. We're heading over to Adobe Illustrator to create this actual super complex geometric shape uh, that's going to go behind our sort of initial logo or name of the event in this case. If you don't have Adobe Illustrator, don't worry. 
Again, there's a link down in the description to this video linking to the the written Illustrator blog post on my website on tutvid.com. Uh, if you go over to that blog post, there's a download. You're going to be able to download this .ai Illustrator file. I'll export it out to like Illustrator CS3 or something so you can open it um, and, and basically be able to drag it into Photoshop and use – uh, the files. I'll figure out how to structure it so you can drag it into Photoshop the same way that we're dragging it in and using all of these files. So yeah, go ahead and download that Illustrator file if you don't have Illustrator. If you do have Illustrator, well, let's go and build this shape. So here we are in Adobe Illustrator. And in fact, now that I'm thinking about it, it's going to be quite a few layers. Maybe what I'll do is just create a PSD that you'll be able to download on that blog post. I don't know. I'll figure it out when we get there. But point is, you're going to be able to download exactly what we're about to create. But if you're interested in learning how to make it, here's how we do it. File new New. And we're going to go with this file, uh, a width of 2,500 pixels by 2,500 pixels. I'm going to go color mode RGB just because that's what we're doing. And uh, go ahead and hit create. It's going to give us this nice square document like so. And we want to go ahead and grab our ellipse tool. So that's this tool right here, the ellipse tool. And we're going to click once. And I'm going to create an ellipse that is 2,000 pixels by 2,000 pixels. Hit OK. You can see we have this massive ellipse. I want to get rid of that white fill, though. So I'm going to hit the little slash icon over here for my fill. Uh, the, the stroke is black. That's fine. Um, in fact, we really want the stroke to be white. So here's what we'll do. We'll create a new layer here. I'm just going to get rid of this ellipse. We'll, we'll create that again in a second. I'm going to name this layer back for background. Let's grab our rectangle tool click once and for the rectangle let's create a 2500 by 2500 pixel square and we're going to flip the fill in the stroke so I'm gonna hit the little swappy swap arrow and I'm going to align this to the center of my artboard over here align to artboard center center great and I probably want this to be a little bit lighter actually so I'll double click on that fill and I'll go to more of like a medium gray hit OK great and I'll just lock that layer so we have this nice sort of medium gray background the reason is we want our finished lines to be white uh, when we drag them into Photoshop they're all going to be white and we'll be you know we'll be applying glows and things like that to them so if we work with a little bit of a darker background we'll be able to see our white strokes here in Illustrator so I'm going to name this layer lines doesn't really matter if you name that layer or not but whatever I did let's go back to the ellipse tool and once again click and we're going to go 2000 by 2000 now it's going to give me an ellipse with this same exact gray fill not to worry though I'm going to just select no fill from that drop down menu and from the stroke drop down menu I'm going to choose white and then here I'm going to make it a four point stroke now what I'm going to do here is again I'm going to make sure align to artboard is selected and align this to the horizontal and vertical centers of my artboard all right our very first shape is in place here's where things start to get interesting over here in fact I'm going to hit from my flyout menu panel options I'm going to make my uh, layer uh, my layer thumbnails maybe about 60 pixels quite a bit larger so we can really really keep track of what's going on over here um, and I want to just watch this so there's my initial ellipse the next thing that I need to do is create a six-sided polygon so go to the polygon tool and click once and I want to make sure this has six sides and I need the radius now remember the radius is half of the diameter and the diameter is the full distance across so like if I wanted this to be 2,000 pixels across for my polygon I would need the radius to be 1,000 pixels and in fact that's what I want so I want a 1,000 pixel radius that's gonna be a 2,000 pixel across polygon and if I just select my uh, move tool here and I align it to the horizontal and vertical centers look at that it fits perfectly within my circle now I need the points of the polygon to be at the top and bottom See, that's the flat sides top bottom so hold down the shift key and just click on one of these corner angles and rotate it until your points are at the top and bottom beautiful just like that and we're gonna go ahead and create a square now here what we're gonna go with is a uh, a thousand pixel by thousand pixel square and see what this does for us let's go ahead and commit that uh, we're going to move this guy to the center of our document as well. You can see definitely a little bit too small. And we want to scale this up so that the corners of our square meet the exact point of or the exact stroke of our outer circle. Now, in order to make this very easy in Adobe Illustrator, go to View. Make sure you turn Smart Guides on and also make sure you turn on Snap to Point. It's going to be very helpful. Grab any corner. Hold down Shift and Alt or Shift and Option if you're on the Mac and just scale, scale, scale and it's going to just drag you right out to where you need to be so that all aligns beautifully with our outer uh, with our outer stroke now if you see a tiny little bit of overlapping stroke see that there the tiny little bit of overlapping stroke just select this up here in the stroke panel all we need to do is set the corner to this rounded corner and that's going to get rid of that area that's sticking out 
Well, I mean, at least it should. It, it actually didn't there because the, the just the width of the stroke is too small. We could do something like align the stroke to the inside, and that'll definitely get rid of it. But I don't want to mess around with my stroke too much. I'm going to leave it. Um, we're going to let the glow take care of it. There's going to be a little bit of overlap, almost like it's rough neon or something. So I'm not, I'm not all that torn up about it. I'm going to select this rectangle here, and we're just going to simply duplicate it. So we're going to go edit, copy, and then we're going to choose edit, paste in front, and then we're going to rotate this guy. Uh, we can go something like object transform, rotate, and just rotate it uh, 45 degrees. You can see that we're going to get this nice diagonal box now as well. So we, we're, we're really quickly building out a rather complex line shape here. And we need to go on and create what will be the most complex of our shapes here. We want to choose the star tool. And I'm going to click once. And what I want to do is create an eight-pointed star. And radius one, this is the, the circle that runs around the imaginary circle, if you will, that runs around and touches the very outside tip of every arm of the star. So my finger's the star that radius one touches all of the points on the very outside. Radius two, on the other hand, touches the points that come inward, so sort of the crotches of the star, where they meet up when they kind of zoom back inward. So radius one of 1,000 and radius two of 600 is really what we want here for our eight-pointed star. Go ahead and hit OK, and we can just try to center this guy up and see. And yeah, look at that. It actually works out perfectly, uh, exactly as, as I want it to be. It's going to fit perfectly into place within our circle and have all these additional points that have been drawn in. Now, we are going to eventually give this uh, star shape a fill. We're going to get rid of the stroke and maybe just give it a white fill. But for the sake of making the rest of our shape a little bit easier to draw, I'm just going to leave it with a white stroke for now. We're going to give it a fill in just a moment. Now we're going to just go and grab the rectangle tool again. I'm going to click to add a rectangle. I'm going to do another 1,000 by 1,000 pixel rectangle. I'm going to align this to the very center here. And you can see that's actually exactly what I need because I want the top corners all to be touching that angled square that we drew before. So we got this nice square dropped into the middle, looking good. And we want to go over and create a polygon. It's just a very complex effect, guys. Very complex effect. A size, six, great. Uh, a radius, we don't want a radius of 1,000 here. We probably want to go like 625, make it a little bit smaller, make it like a 1,250 pixel across radius. And go ahead and align this guy to the uh, horizontal and vertical centers. And I want the flat sides to be on the top and bottom. So you can see that's going to sit there and be just kind of a little bit bigger than the square we drew. That's just perfect. It's exactly how we want it to be there in the center of our shape. You can see we're just building this thing on, building this thing on. And we're going to go with another ellipse here. So I'm going to select the ellipse. I'm going to go with a 1,000 pixel ellipse. Again, align this to the center. This is the beauty of just aligning everything to the center. As you can see, I align that ellipse to the center, and it's exactly lined up with that 1,000 pixel by 1,000 pixel square. That's great. And of course, next, we've got yet another shape to do here. We're going to go with the polygon tool again. I'm going to click once. Uh, we did 625 before this time. I mean, look at that. I want to go 500 pixels on my radius. Six sides again. Yes. Okay. I want the points to be on the top and bottom. So hold down the shift key here and just rotate it 45 degrees like so and align it to the horizontal and vertical centers. You can see it clicks right into the middle of that circle just ever so beautifully. I love it. We're going to go and grab the rectangle tool. I feel like we're creating a bajillion shapes here. We're going to go with 500, height 500 pixels. I'm going to align this horizontal and vertical centers. And I want to scale this up until I hit uh, the curve of the circle here. So hold down Shift and Alt. Let me shift an option on the Mac. And we're eventually going to click. There we go. It clicked. And our, our, pick, our, our, our square is going to run right beautifully into the edges of the circle. That's pretty good. This square we're actually going to get rid of a little bit down the road. But we're putting it here for reference for now. Just gives us a, a perfect working guide, if you will. Because we're going to use the polygon tool to create a few triangles. So I'm going to click once. And what I want to do with the polygon is create a three-sided polygon, which is a triangle, and a radius of 500 is exactly what I want. Because remember, a radius of 500, well, I hit OK, and you're going to see it's going to give me this triangle. And this triangle, it's a little bit wider than the square that we just placed. Whoops, I'm going to undo that. I, I bumped the circle there. It's a little bit wider than the square we just created, but not quite as wide as the big 1,000-pixel wide square. I think I actually want it to be as wide as the 1,000-pixel square. So we're going to go ahead and size this triangle up a little bit. And I'll do that. When you have the, the triangle selected, all you need to do, and in fact, yeah, we will size it up this way because we need to make the triangle a little bit longer as well. Up here, we've got our width. We're going to set that to 1,000 pixels. So that's going to make it exactly as wide as that bigger square, this square right here. Great. And we're going to set the height of it not at 750, but let's go like 1150. Let's try 1150. I have a feeling that's going to be good. Yeah, so it's just a, a little bit longer and pointier than it originally was. 
And what I want to do with this triangle is drag it over. Oh, you know what? Now that I'm looking at it too, this little square, I said this is going to be the temporary placeholder guide. The thousand pixel square is actually going to be the temporary placeholder guide just to, if I'm going to go back and make a little correction. No worries. We'll get rid of it and take care of that in a second whichever square it is. I want to just move this over and if I have all my snapping turned on, I can snap this triangle exactly into place. Now here, here's the important thing about the triangle. I'm looking to snap the bottom 1000 pixel edge to the bottom 1000 pixel edge of this square right here. If I make this stroke like 30 pixels, that square is the one that I'm looking to snap my triangle to. In fact, I'll just leave it at 30 pixels. Let's go ahead and snap the triangle in place. There you go. It's going to snap beautifully. And we want to go object. Uh, I'm sorry. We're going to go edit, copy, edit, paste in front. And then we're going to flip this by going object transform and reflect. And over here, you can see we're reflecting along the horizontal axis beautifully. Go ahead and hit OK. And the top edge also needs to be lined up exactly with the top edge of the square. So we now have this triangle. If I uh, select the square here, let me just collapse my stroke panel for a second to give us a little bit more room here. This is this is that square. If I hide it, the, the back edges of our triangles, of our super complex looking shape, they are what are going to basically make that thousand pixel by thousand pixel square. So I'm going to select both of these triangles. It's my last two polygons that have been created here in my layers panel. So I'm going to select that one, hold down shift, select the second one. And here I'll go edit, copy, and I'll just paste this right in front. And then I'm going to go object, transform, rotate, and I'm just going to rotate this 90 degrees. So I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And you can see we've just rotated here. If I grab all four of these polygons, right, like this, and I just drag them over to here, this is the shape that we've just created with these four triangles all kind of running crisscross across one another and filling in the center of our shape. I'm going to undo moving that because I don't want to move it. This is the main bulk of the shape we're creating here in uh, Adobe Illustrator. So what I'm going to do now is select that uh, the star shape, which I told you I was going to fill with a different color. And I'm going to flip the stroke so that it's solid white. You can see now everything sort of disappears. It makes it almost impossible to see it. So maybe I'll make this like uh, I can really make it any color I want. So I'm going to go with like a light gray. Hit OK. That way we can at least see the white strokes above it. And I'm also going to select this little circle here in the middle. It's not really a little circle. It's the, the big circle we created in the middle there. It's a 1,000 pixel by 1,000 pixel circle. I want to also fill this with probably a light gray, something a little bit darker than the star, just for differentiation purposes, just so we know what we're looking at. Go ahead and hit OK. So we have kind of our star, our somewhat darker. I'm going to make it even a little bit darker than that just to make it a little easier to see. Our somewhat darker circle and all these other white lines. Now we need to begin the process of copying them over into our Photoshop document and punching holes in what we need to punch holes in, add layer styles, add glows, all kinds of cool stuff like that. And it'll move really fast. I know this has taken a little bit of time to create, but you can see it's pretty complex. Again, if you want to just download the Illustrator file or PSD, however I end up sharing this, uh, probably by PSD the more I think about it, um, you'll be able to just go ahead and download that and skip this entirely, especially obviously if you don't have Adobe Illustrator, that might be helpful for you. The last thing that we want to do before we actually just straight up copy this into Photoshop is just drag a selection over the whole thing with your selection tool and just click drag right over it. And you can see up here our width is 2002 pixels by 2002 pixels. Let's just set this to a straight up 1600 by 1600. Um, again, we're copying vector artwork over. I would rather it be a little bit smaller. We can always scale it up in Photoshop if we have to. Um, but I want to basically copy this over piece by piece into our Photoshop document. So I'm going to begin with the bottom ellipse. It's just that initial circle, Command or Control C. Let's jump over to Photoshop. And oh, that's the, the working document. This is the document I'm interested in. Command or Control V to paste it in place. And I'm going to paste it as a smart object. I'm going to hit OK. And it's going to drop the circle in place. You can see. At 100% width and height, it's a little bit smaller than our document. That is exactly perfect. If the biggest shape is a little bit smaller than our document, that means if we just paste everything right in place like this, everything will be pasted exactly where it needs to be, and we don't need to worry about fussing and just moving things one pixel left or right to get it exactly placed. Everything will be placed exactly where it needs to be automatically. So we're going to drag that over. Uh, let's go with the first polygon. Copy it, paste, smart object, great, beautiful. We're going to go with our rectangle. Copy, paste, smart object, OK, commit the change, love it. 
with their next one. Boom, copy. And by the, by the way, it's just Command-Control-C. Pretty simple and paste. Command-Control-V. Hit OK. Commit the change. Love it. All right, now with this path, we're just going to straight up copy it with the color and everything. Paste it right there in place. Yep, love it. Commit the change. Uh, we're going to go ahead and grab the next rectangle. Whoop, I didn't select anything. Oh, well, it's shut off. That would be why. What was that? That was, oh, that was our big rectangle that we don't need. So we're not even going to copy it over. Great. Let's go with the polygon. How quickly I forget things. Ay, ay, ay. Go ahead and commit that change. I'm only 27, but you'd think maybe I'm 67. All right, I'm going to paste it. There we go. Smart object. Not that 67 is that old. Those of you that are 67 years old, you are. What am I saying? You're not You're not that young anymore, but you're, you're still pretty young. I'm going to select this. Command or Control C. Command or Control V. Paste as a smart object. Commit that change. Uh, now we're going to start copying and pasting the triangles. I'm going to just commit that. And you can see here the triangle, it didn't look like it quite. Did it paste in the right place? No. You can see it's supposed to be up a little bit off of the edge of the polygon, but it's actually down beneath the polygon. So we'll have to adjust our triangles a little bit. I'm going to get them all into this Photoshop document, uh, and then I will worry about put it, pushing them all into place. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and copy this. I'm going to paste it. And it's in a little bit high. I'm not worried about it, though. I'll fix that later. Let's grab our next triangle. And by the way, speaking of getting old, I kind of can't wait till I start getting some gray hairs and get my walker. I'll trick my walker out with the tennis balls and all that cool stuff. Uh, all right, I'm going to paste this as a smart object. There we go. And we've got everything kind of in place. What we need to do is just move these triangles. I don't know where the whole tennis ball walker thing came from, but... Uh, what are you going to do? All right, I'm going to uh, select this here, and this is the leftmost triangle. So whatever I do, um, I'm actually going to work, I guess, with the top and bottom triangles first. So I'm going to shut these two triangles off. I'm going to work with the top and bottom triangle. So I'm going to go with the bottom triangle first, and I'm going to grab my move tool. I'm going to hold down shift and just use the up arrow key. One, two, three, four, five, six. I moved it up six times. All right, so I'm going to do the same exact thing here with this triangle. One, two, three, four, five, six. Moved it down six times. Great. And I'm going to see if this looks right if I go one, two, three, four, five, six, move it over six times. Yeah, that looks about right. I kind of wish a little bit more of the point was sticking out past that uh, hexagon, but we can maybe adjust the size of the hexagon, but I don't know how much I want to mess with it. All right, I'm going to grab this. I'm going to bump it over one, two, three, four, five, six. And you can see now that all the edges of those triangles are forming this perfect square in there. So that is, in fact, exactly what we needed to do. So that looks pretty good. I'm probably going to save my PSD here by going File, Save As. I'll just save it to my desktop for the time being as a poster or something like that because it would really not be too fun if we lost all of our progress at this point. And what I think I'll do is just zoom out and we want to move this whole line art bit upward a bit. Uh, and we'll, we'll size it down just a tiny bit. So over here in the layers panel, select the top layer, scroll down, hold down your shift key, select the bottom vector smart object. Oops, I was holding my caps lock key, the shift key, and hit command or control G to group them up. And let's name this, uh, that, that layer group lines or something. And I'm going to drag it straight upward, probably to right about, right about there. It's probably good. And then I'll go edit to free transform. It's going to free transform the whole group. And I'll size it down a little bit more. So something right about like that, about 90% width and height would look, works pretty good. Commit the change, great. I'm going to open up my lines group. We're going to begin with the, the star object, the object filled with all that gray, because we really want to get that out of there so we can begin to see all of our lines again and see what we're working with. Uh, so the first thing we're going to do is reduce the fill opacity to 0%. See, the fill doesn't even matter. And we're going to go layer layer style and I'm gonna begin with a gradient overlay now the gradient overlay I'm actually I kinda of dig the pinkish color but it's not quite what I want what I want to do is go with a, a gradient that goes from FF 32 FF so I'm gonna open this color picker here so I'm gonna go FF 32 FF right it's kinda of like a hot pink to exactly the same color on the other side that's exactly what that is FF 32 FF I'm gonna hit OK and I want to set this color stop up here to the opacity of zero. So I'm going to set that to zero. So basically we have this hot pink fading to nothing. I'm going to hit OK. And we're going to set this gradient to a style of radial. Now the radial gradient, the center of it, is like down here somewhere. In order to move this, just simply click and drag to move it. I'm going to move it to the approximate center of my star. Something right about there, and I'll boost the scale a little bit to make the pink flow outward a little bit more than it is. So maybe about like 110, 115 in the scale department works pretty well. 
We'll set the overall blend mode of this gradient to overlay. That's going to help it blend with the background a little bit. And we can reduce the opacity a little bit if needed, but I don't know how much I'm really going to need to reduce it. Maybe down to like 80%. Keep an eye on it. And I can also go throw a stroke on this. I still have the stroke from a tutorial I recently recorded. I'm going to go color. I'm going to go uh, white. We may come in and adjust this a little bit later. And something like two. We want this to be pretty subtle. Uh, I'm going to set the blend mode to normal and drop the opacity to like 25. Uh, in fact, maybe 15. I'll go even lower. Yeah, 15 will probably be good in this case. Uh, I think I need to push the opacity of my gradient back to 100. Let's roll with that. And the stroke. You know what, man? I'm pushing it down to like 7% opacity, 10% opacity. Yeah, 10%. Let's roll with 10% here. And I'm going to hit OK. And now what we want to do is load this circle, the thousand pixel circle, as a selection and use this to punch a hole in the middle of our star. We're going to do that by command or control clicking on the layer thumbnail for that circle and then select that vector smart object layer and go layer, layer mask, hide selection. So it's going to hide that circular area in the middle, effectively punching a hole in the middle of our star shape. Let's turn that vector smart object back on. And again here, we're going to reduce the fill to zero. So I'm going to just select that slider, boom, down to zero. Great. And we need to apply uh, a layer style to this as well. I just want to get these two shapes set because it's going to just, you know, you can see how it's clearing it out so we can see the rest of our lines. Let's go layer, layer style. And I'm going to roll with an outer glow to kick things off here. We're going to set the outer glow to this uh, blend mode of normal. And a really hot pink is great. I think I'm going to pump the opacity back to 100. I kind of dig it. I'm going to try setting the size to something obscene, like 225. That's actually almost perfect, where it's just really blowing out this really hot glow from the middle of this sort of star shape. That looks great. Uh, I can double click here. I probably want that same FF, uh, 32FF pink color coming from the middle. I don't know though, I kind of like that reddish pinkish color that I had a second ago. Something like a red, yeah, you know what, I like the reddish pinkish color. I'm gonna roll with some kind of reddish pinkish color. What do I have there? FF327A, that looks pretty cool. Maybe I'll make that just a little bit darker. Yeah, kind of like that, I dig it. I dig that a lot. What is the final color? DF1059 is what I'm going with. Uh, and the size of 225 is just perfect. And I'm going to go ahead and hit OK. And now what we're going to do is we want to select the outer shapes here. So I believe that's these four vector shapes, right? Yep, all of those. We're going to select all of them. So I'm going to select the bottom one, hold down my Shift key, select the top one. And we're going to set these to a blend mode of overlay and reduce the opacity of these to something around 60%. So it makes them nice and subtle. They're just kind of hanging out out there. They're interacting with the background colors beautifully. They're flowing and allowing the color of the star to kind of work underneath them a little bit. And they look uh, pretty sharp. And I think now it's time to add a little bit of an overall glow beneath the whole object here. So come down to the blue stuff layer. Let's create a new layer. Actually, I don't even need to create a new layer because I'm going to create a new shape layer. So I'm going to select my ellipse tool, make sure that I'm creating a new shape. Uh, I don't want it to have a stroke. I do want it to have a fill. Let's just give it a hot pink. Um, I can give it the same hot pink as the the uh, the outer glow in the center or something close to that. Um, I could go in and get the exact color. I already forget what it was, FF1059 or something like that. I'm going to just go ahead and drag out a circle, hold down my shift key, constrain it to a perfect circle, and drop it in there, something like that. Um, I can align it to the exact center if I go like select uh, all, so the select menu, choose all, grab my move tool, and just uh, align it to the vertical center, something like that. Command or control D to deselect. That's good. And now we're going to automatically convert this to a smart object because we're going to blur the living daylights out of this by going filter blur, Gaussian blur. And see, it's going to say, hey, look, a shape layer's got to be rasterized or converted to a smart object, which is going to maintain the vector shape. So, of course, we're going to convert it to a smart object, convert to smart object, Gaussian blur. 125 looks good. Maybe we'll bump it up for good measure, like 135. It's a little softer. Hit OK. And we're going to set this layer to the blend mode of Linear Dodge Add. And we're going to reduce the fill opacity quite a bit. Uh, maybe bring it down to somewhere between 30 and 40. Maybe right on, almost 40 on the nose. You can see it gives us just a nice, really nice glow beneath that. Now, I also want to add some white beneath this to kind of like mute and desaturate, but also infuse a little more brightness. If we just duplicate this layer, when we change the color of one layer, because it's a smart object, we'll end up changing the color of the other layer. I, I don't really want to display it. It'll take too much time. Let, well, here's what you need to do. Right click and 
and choose New Smart Object via Copy. And now what we'll do is select the one on the bottom, and we'll double click on the thumbnail. You can see it's going to open up a .psb, and this just contains a shape layer, which is that exact shape we created, that shape layer we created a moment ago with the Ellipse tool. The Smart Object has wrapped it inside of this little file called a .psb file. If we just double click on the Ellipse thumbnail here in the Layers panel, we can change the color of the Ellipse. Let's go white. Great. I save it by hitting Command or Control S, and then go File, Close. And it's going to automatically update here in my document, including with that smart filter blur automatically applied to the white. Um, so that's great. I'm actually going to make this a little bit bigger by going edit free transform. And it's going to say, hey, look, smart filters are temporarily going to be shut off. No problem. I'm going to scale this up maybe like 115% width and height. Make it a little bit bigger and hit the little check icon. It's going to reapply the blur automatically. And I'll reduce the fill opacity pretty low, maybe like 15 here. So it's just giving us like a nice spray of white. And we turn the pink blur back on. And there we go. We've got this nice blur happening underneath our uh, lines and things that are moving back and forth uh, on top of everything. So now it's time to grab a couple of these shapes here in the very middle. I think just the square on that polygon, in fact, which will not be the top four shapes. Those are triangles, right? So that's these two shapes here. Yeah, the square on the polygon. We're going to give them the same treatment we gave those outer uh, lines. So that's the blend mode of overlay and an opacity of right around 60%. We might, we might go a little bit more intense because it's the middle, but meh, I don't think so. And now these triangles and this shape right here, this remaining polygon, they're all going to get a layer style applied to them. So I'm going to grab one of the triangles, and I'm going to go layer, layer style, outer glow. We're going to apply an outer glow to each of these strokes. And this outer glow is going to have the blend mode of color dodge. And we're going to give it a color here of D5, uh, 1, 6, 8, 0. So maybe that was exactly what it had a moment ago. I didn't take a moment to check. Uh, no, actually it didn't because there's the current color. Go ahead and hit OK. We want our opacity to be at 100%. The reason it doesn't look like we see anything is because the size is a ridiculous 225, which worked great for that outer glow around our big shape, but our line is so thin, 225 is just going to obliterate it. Let's try something like 15 pixels. See how that just restored a nice blur around that one triangle? We've got a nice glow action happening. Really, really cool. Uh, I want to go back to blending options here and just get rid of the fill opacity. So essentially, it's going to hide the entire white line. So we want to replace that with a color overlay. Now, the color overlay is going to be this very very, very light yellow, almost heading to beige color, FFFDC8, uh, I find works really well. And we'll just boost the opacity here to like 60%, maybe 65%, something fairly bright, eh, maybe 75%. This will sort of be like the inside of our neon, if you will. Go ahead and hit OK. And we have that applied now to the shape. We want to get it quickly to the rest of the lines. Really easy. Simply right-click on this layer, choose Copy Layer Style, select these three triangles, and then hold down your Command or Control key. Well, let's turn that polygon back on. Hold down Command or Control and click out here on that, that polygon layer. And now right-click and just choose Paste Layer Style. And it's going to quickly apply those same exact effects to all of those layers. If we don't like the way this polygon looks, um, it looks a little muted. The reason is because technically it's beneath this object, which is giving off that strong pink outer glow. Just go ahead and drag it above that, and it'll kind of intensify that effect a little bit for us there in the middle of our little line art. And now we're finally ready to just collapse this lines group, put that to rest a little bit, and we'll create a new layer here, and I'm going to call this layer uh, Dots. And I'm going to right click and paste that layer style right onto this layer as well. But I'm going to crank the fill opacity back to 100%. I don't want that to be zero. Uh, and we're going to grab the brush tool. And I'm going to right click. And I'm going to load in my basic brushes again. So I hit the little flyout menu up here in this corner. A little gear icon. Select that and choose basic brushes. Hit OK to just uh, replace it with our basic brushes. And let's go with... Uh, let's select this 24 pixel brush, but we're going to crank it down to like 20 and set the hardness to, I don't know, let's go like 85. We don't want it to be hard, but we definitely don't want it to be super soft. We need it to have like a blurred edge to it. And we want to paint with our foreground color set to white. Now here's what I want to do. This is where things get kind of cool. Basically, wherever we want to just add a little dot of light, we can click and you can see I have that little plus in the middle of my brush. You can get that, by the way, side tip, preferences. Uh, how do we do this here? I believe in cursors. You see I have show crosshair and brush tip. I have that ticked on. So that shows me where the exact center of my brush is. So I can place a dot exactly on the tip of that little uh, triangle there. So you can see we get a nice glowing orb there on, our, on the edge of our triangle. Uh, so I'm going to grab my brush tool and do the same thing down here. Uh, that's great. Whoop, it's not quite centered up perfectly. We want to really make sure we get these centered nicely uh, and they'll look really good for us. 
Go ahead and place that one there. Let's place one over here. Ba boom. Uh, maybe make it a little bit smaller. So right click. Let's make the size like uh, 15 maybe. And let's place them at the corners of our box. So one there, one there. And these don't at all, they don't really have to be exact at all. All right, so we can place those there. Uh, we can make this a little bit smaller. Let's maybe make this 10 pixels, this brush, and place one like right in here, maybe another one here, and another one up here, uh, and maybe another one where, 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 over here, and over here, and let's go over here and here. So we're just placing a few of them here in the middle. Uh, that all looks pretty good. Maybe I'll make the brush a little bit bigger, bring it back to like 20, and drop one on that corner there, and this corner here, and this corner here. You can just kind of place these wherever. I mean, you can see I'm just throwing some in there just to mix things up a little bit. In fact, maybe I'll add another big one over top of this one here just to make it a little bit bigger. And now I want to add some out here into like the edge, like the almost the tips of the stars. Um, and I don't at all care if these are, if they're aligned perfectly, they don't have to be. The important thing is I want them to be slightly faded. So I'm going to set the opacity of my brush tool to 50% and I want these to be 20 pixels. So my brush tool is set to 20 pixels. Great. And I'm just going to click once out there and I'll click like once. Yeah, I'll go like right there, right? That looks probably pretty good. I'll go out here. Cool. I'll go right up here. I'll go down here. There. Let's see, try to mimic the one straight across from it, and then one right there. So we just add a few of these glowing dots all around it. Again, add them wherever you think it's uh, suitable or it, it kind of fits. I'll throw another one right there just because I can, and I'm going to zoom in just a little bit. I think I'm going to add another one here, the biggest one of all, and I'm going to make it a little bit softer as well. So I'm going to undo. I'm going to set one right there. So cool. All right, we've created all these little dots and spots uh, glowing here amongst our little network of lines. It really looks pretty cool. The more I look at it, the more I feel like one needs to be there. Don't add too many, and you can see it gets kind of addicting adding them, but it really adds a really, really cool element and effect to the overall look of our, of our poster. So now we want to go ahead and grab uh, another brush pack that I have a link for down in the description. You can download this brush totally free. Let's create a new layer and just name this layer uh, Clouds. And I'm going to right click and I'm going to hit that little flyout menu and choose to replace the brushes. And I'm going to choose Clouds by Mila.abr. Again, this is a free brush pack you can download. I'm going to set my foreground color to a nice light blue, probably about the same blue that I used for that powder effect that we did early on. Once more, well, we're not going to set this layer to soft light. We'll just set this one to overlay. I'll grab my brush tool and right click and I'll start choosing some of the clouds and I'll just paint them in. You know what? Actually, I'm going to set the layer back to normal so I can really see what I'm doing here with the clouds. And let's throw a cloud in there, something over here. Just want to be careful, again, not overdoing it, but definitely adding a sort of, um, I don't even know what kind of effect it is, but it's just going to almost almost be like a reverse uh, burned vignette, kind of like a nice lighten, a lightning type vignette around the edges. And generally vignettes look really bad, but in this case, this, this kind of looks, looks cool. So we're going to go ahead and do this. And add those clouds, add those clouds. I'll add some of this cloud there, something like that. And then maybe, I mean, maybe one more, one more dab of something, something down there. And then, yeah, we'll set this layer to the blend mode of overlay. And now guess what? It's time to add some type. So let's add the text to the to the middle of this. I'm going to grab my text tool. Uh, we're working with just this blue text. I'm going to type out two words. I'm going to text out, uh, text out. I'm going to type out uh, skewed. And then I'm going to hit enter return. And I'm going to type the word stat. Stats. I'm going to go stats. I'm going to go skewed stats. I'm going to open up my character panel. It's under Window Character. And I'm going to choose a font. It's J-A-A -A, uh, Jopoki, something like that. I'm going to go with that font. I think it's kind of cool. I'm going to make this quite a bit larger. So I'm going to go maybe 250 points. Let's see what that looks like. Probably still not quite big enough. Maybe, eh, you know, maybe a little too big. Uh, but here's what we want to do. We want to make sure in the paragraph panel here, this is center aligned. So everything's going to be aligned uh, to the center of our little text field here in terms of the text. We want to make it all caps. So skewed stats. And let me look at this. Let's try Yeah, let's go with one of the enhanced ones. 
I don't know, which is cooler. I kind of like that. It looks a little bit more spacey, but that also just has a lot of nice breathing room. I'm going to go with this one because I think that's what I used in the other uh, example. I'm going to double click on my text and I'm going to size the word skewed down. So I'm going to hover over the icon right next to the size. I'm going to drag to the left and it's going to size that text downward. I'm going to size it down until it's about the width of the word stats. Then I'm going to grab the word stats. I'm going to highlight the word stats, I should say, and I'm going to drag the letting down. Down. And you can see here, well, I actually need to drag it up because it sort of reset it. I'm going to drag it, drag it, drag it until it looks like it just has just the right amount of spacing. Whatever the right amount is, that's what I want. And I'm going to set the color of my text to white. And I'm going to go ahead and commit this change. And now I'm going to drag this text up. And the key here is I want it to fit, I think, What's going to look best is if it fits kind of within this small box here in the center. So I'm going to drag, I'm going to kind of place it in there, and then I'm going to hold down Command or Control T, hold down my Shift key, and drag, 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 and resize it until it kind of is fitting in there. Great. And then I'll just drag it over, drop it in the middle. Yeah, something like that is probably good. I don't know. I kind of feel like it needs to be a little bit bigger, even if it breaks that space a little bit. Yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to drag it up. I really want it to be nicely packed in there. And if I want this to be aligned perfectly to the center of the document, again, just select all. And with the move tool selected, you can just go ahead and hit the align to the vertical center. And it's going to line that up nicely. Select uh, deselect. There it is to get rid of the marching ants. All right, cool. And now that we have the text in place, it's actually pretty simple. We just want the same exact layer style from the dots. So right click, copy that layer style, select the text, right click and choose paste layer style. And if the yellow looks like it's a little bit too much from the color overlay, double click, go to color overlay and just reduce the opacity of it. You know, drop it down to 25 or whatever looks good. And I think 25, 26 looks pretty good in this case. So I'm going to roll with that. Skewed stats looks like it's a little bit too high. See how the top of the W is closer to that dot than maybe the bottom of the A is to that intersection. So I'm using my arrow keys and just nudge it downward a little bit just until it looks like it's positioned nicely. And at this point, I'm going to grab my text tool again and I'm going to type out 25 and enter return. I'm going to type July. So I'm going to say this is an event that's happening on the 25th of July. In fact, let's say 25th. And I'm going to select this text. I don't want to I don't want to move it. I'm going to highlight the text, I should say. And in my character panel, I'm going to choose this font, Adam.cg Pro. There we go. And I'm going to select the TH here, and I'm going to try to make that some smaller, the smaller text here, the superscript, which will effectively make that the TH a bit smaller. And in fact, maybe I'll make it even smaller, right? Something like that. Take it down to like 175, and then I'll push it up, 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 up until it's kind of about at the top of the 25. I'm using this little option here. What is this called? I forget. Set the baseline shift. So we set the baseline shift to about 50 points, and that baseline shift did some, did some good stuff for us. So I dig it. Uh, I'm going to now take July, and I'm going to downsize it only a little bit. I want it to be about as wide as the 25th, and I'm going to adjust the, the leading here and make it a bit tighter. So something like that will probably work about right. Go ahead and hit the little check icon to commit that change. And you know, maybe the TH should be down at the bottom. I don't know. I'm not going to mess with it too much. I overthink everything. Um, now that we have 25th of July, everything is sized kind of how we want it. It's definitely too big because I want to stick it up here in the corner, but within a circle. So I need to size the whole thing down. So let's go edit, free transform, and just hold down shift and option. That'll be shift and alt on the PC. Size it down to like somewhere about that size. That'll work for us. I'll drop it right in place there. I'll grab my ellipse tool. Again, we're drawing out a shape. I'm going to draw out a nice circle, hold down my shift key so I get a nice perfect circle and drop it right in place there. It has a fill. I don't want it to have a fill. So I'm going to select the fill options here in the properties panel, select the slash, go to the stroke options, and I'm just going to give it a white stroke as we have been doing. Four pixels is great. And I just want to straight up reduce the opacity of the circle to like 25%. That's really going to allow it to interact with the background underneath it. And I'm going to give both of these uh, a little bit of an outer glow. So I'm going to select the text because that's the one that's at 100% opacity and go layer, layer style, uh, outer glow. I'll probably pretty much keep what I had in terms of the, the color dodge. That's, that's pretty decent. Size of 15 might be a little much. Maybe I'll go like 9. Uh, and I think I'll go with a light blue instead of a pink. So let's go with like a very, very light blue. Maybe a little bit more desaturated than that. Something like that. And maybe even set the blend mode. Let's try screen instead of color dodge. Yeah, I kind of dig that. Make the size a little bit bigger. Yeah, reduce the opacity just a touch. Around about 75 screen with this nice light blue of 59 A1 D9. Size of 18. Go ahead and hit OK. And then we'll just apply that to the ellipse. So right click, copy layer style, select the ellipse, right click. 
paste layer style, and there'll be a little bit of a glow. Now, uh, it's all been brought back to 100% opacity, so I'm just going to, again, reduce that bad boy down to about 25% opacity. It's going to reduce the glow with it, but I don't mind that. I kind of like it. Looks pretty cool. Just a July 25th hanging out up in the corner there. And what we need to do now is drag the text in that's going to be down here below. So over here in this document, I'm just going to grab this bunch of lower text that I have. Um, and I'm just going to drag it. I'm going to hold down shift and drop it. It'll drop it right in place. And this is basically, it's just some nice sharp edge text. Again, I threw a little bit of an outer glow on it, just like we did up here with the July 25th text. Added a couple lines. I think I reduced the opacity of the lines. Yeah, to like 50%. Um, and just, you know, some nice spacing, nice lines. Club, hush, whatever. I don't know. I just picked every club. Seems like it has a one word word uh, name so I just went club hush uh, and then some different uh, you know sort of like house DJs or feature DJs whatever for this event and just some you know faux information for the event itself now what we want to do is add some blending grain overall so I'm going to create a new layer I'm going to name the layer grain as you may well expect for a layer that's going to be full of grain go edit fill I'm going to fill this with a 50% gray and I'm going to right click and convert this to a smart object because it gives me options down the road and go filter camera raw filter and here in the camera raw filter we're gonna go to the FX tab we're gonna crank up that grain quite a bit actually we'll crank the size up as well and then I think hmm, what do I want to do with roughness I think I want to keep roughness right around the middle but I definitely I want a lot of grain in there so I'm gonna go ahead and just roll with that hit OK it's going to return a bunch of grain. I'm going to set it to the blend mode of something like overlay, which is going to be kind of extreme. And I'll just reduce the opacity. I definitely, I want the grain to be a little noticeable. See, there it is before grain. Because it's just going to give all of our lines and colors and gradients just a very smooth, almost organic feel as though it's there in real life, even though you kind of know it's not there in real life. But it just gives everything a nice overall blended effect. I really, really like it. And last but not least, we're going to go with a color balance adjustment layer here. We're going to begin with our shadows and roll with me here. We're going to crank in, pump in a ton of red. So red, we're going to push up to 60. We'll also add a bunch of green. We'll bump, bump that to 15. And we're going to add a bunch of yellow to the shadows by knocking that down to negative 40. We're going to come over here to our mid-tones. In the mid-tones, we're going to boost the reds 35. So we're adding even more red. We're going to um, bump the magentas by reducing green. And we're so that's going to be negative 35. So that's favoring magenta, of course. And uh, negative 35 for the yellow-blue slider, which is going to pump some yellow into those mid-tones. And then over here in highlights, we're going to add some cyan to the highlights. So negative 30, you can see how it's going to really help the pink to pop there in the middle. Isn't our poster looking beautiful? It actually is looking hideous, but hang with me. It's going to look great in just a second. Uh, now we're going to go with negative 40 to pump more magenta into those highlights. And we want to add yet more yellow to the highlights, which is going to kind of make everything a little bit more red. I also do have preserve luminosity checked on, which is kind of important. You can see it gives us a, a vastly different effect. Now what we want to do is set this color balance layer to the blend mode of multiply, which is going to do more damage. But hey, maybe this is actually the effect that you really like. I don't necessarily, so I'm going to reduce the opacity of this layer to about 40-ish percent, you know, 40, 45 percent, and then you can see there's before, there's after. It just really helps all the colors to pop. It helps the contrast to pop. It helps everything to pop, and popping is what I like, especially in this case with this kind of like crazy borderline psychedelic um, type of club poster. So yeah, I think that will be it for this one. If you enjoyed the tutorial, make sure you leave a little like on this video down below. Also, comment and subscribe. That stuff helps immensely to help get these videos pushed up so lots of people can see them and share them and hopefully love what they see for creating a club atmosphere poster. Oh, and by the way, all the downloads, the fonts, the brushes I'm using, as long as I can find them and as long as they're free, I'll have that stuff linked down in the description and the, the vector, either AI file or PSD, it's going to be available for download over on my website. The link will be in the description of the video. So for creating a crazy, colorful, make my eyeballs dance kind of club promotion poster in Photoshop, that's it. Get it? Got it? Good. NathanielDodson.com. I'll catch you in the next one.